All right, welcome back to part two, how to wind wind turbine coils, among other coils. Excuse me sniffing all the time, it's minus 10 here just now. Okay, here's what I found off of the scrapyard. Like I said in part one, I assume you have all these kind of power tools, otherwise you're going to have a hard time building a wind turbine. Okay, first I'm going to start with the frame. This big chunk of metal, quite usual thing to find around scrapyards. Uh, mine's is 70 centimetres long, which is this bit here. Uh, you could get other pieces of metal from the scrapyard to make your frame. It's quite a simple thing to do. If you cannot weld or you don't have a welding machine, I suppose you could bolt it all together with nuts and bolts, but do use a lot of them to keep the frame as solid as you can. You're going to need that solidarity because you're using so much force when you're winding. Well, I do anyway. I like to keep my coils nice and tight. Um, you're going to need your angle grinder sander because you're going to sand all your metal frame. You've really got to sand this as fine as you can to avoid scratching the enamel on your wire. I've got different kinds of sanders here to get this as smooth as we can. Um, I suppose it's a good idea to paint over it with some metal paint also. Even further avoid scratching your enamel. Um, these kind of things are quite good to work with. There's a little grub screw inside it so you can adjust it up or down for the alignment which I was explaining in part one. Um, I found this thing which is excellent for um, your stator alignment. It's got all the angles for you. Pieces of round wood which are easy to find on a scrap yard. Uh, hard plastic. This plastic is quite special plastic. It's rock solid. Listen to this. The noise it makes. You can feel the weight in it. It's so powerful and solid. I like using this because uh, I don't get indents from the spacers I'm going to be using. This is from an old motor. Uh, I've still got the bearings in it. I uh, use the axle. Cut that away. Put some screws in it and you've got your area here. It's good to have a couple of old motors from the scrapyard as well. Um, I've used the angle grinder to cut this in half so I can access the copper wire. Uh, I usually use this to practice with. I do advise practicing winding with some kind of copper wire first, preferably the same size as the copper wire you're going to use because to buy copper wire is quite expensive. Uh, here's these things I cut these holes with, also makes that, these are pen lids, looks like metal but they're actually silver plastic, I wouldn't use metal, might scratch the enamel, don't use absolutely no metal, nothing which will scratch your uh, copper enamel. Um, some screws bits and bobs to make the handle, some bearings here, I suppose you could find a better handle than the one I made. The one I've made is what I've just showed you there, I've just welded it all together, I've attached it to this part here, which was a one millimetre drill, I just drilled right through the middle to keep the counter going round. Put it all together and voila! Right, here's a little look at my stator, which I'll be using a three-phase Y-delta configuration. I'm going to be using 16 magnets with 12 coils. Got round magnets, so obviously I'm using round coils. For your rectangular magnets, obviously you're going to use these type of coils. Uh, you would use a star configuration with 12 magnets and 9 coils for lower wind speed areas. I've got to clean this up a little bit, ready to be cast in resin. Still quite a bit of work to do there. The size of the magnets you use must be in proportion to your coil size, which must be in proportion to your stator and alternator size. All that kind of information you can find on the links you see on your screen now. Just cut and paste to your browser. There's a lot of uncertainty about coil thickness on most websites, and usually read about X amount of centimetres, or roughly, or approximately X amount of centimetres. I've read in so many websites and quite a few books too. 
Let me assure you, these spacers I've used are exactly the same diameter as my magnets. As you would have the space between here and here exactly the same diameter as your magnet. Here's a good example of drawing a line around this. I don't know if you can see it with this rubbish telephone camera. Drawing a line around, got it in perfect center. These plastic dowels. Don't use metal, you will scratch your enamel, as I explained earlier. The coils must be one third of the thickness of the magnets when using a three phase configuration. So if I'm using magnets 6 millimeters thick, which these are, my coils are 9 millimeters thick, which is the space between here and here, when I'm winding. Uh, so if you're using 9 millimeters thick magnets, you're going to be using 12 millimeters thick space between here and here. A little bit of calculation you have to do there get it the right size. Also difficult information I found freely is about spacing between your magnets and coils. So imagine if these coils part of your stator and these magnets are attached to your alternator whizzing around at 100 revs per minute or whatever speed. As one magnet is in the middle of the coil the other magnet cannot touch the outside of the coil. As it goes around and comes out of the centre, the other magnet on your alternator will just be connecting with the outside of the other coil. That's why there's a system in place, by general rule of thumb, to use 12 magnets with 9 coils, or 16 magnets with 12 coils, and so on. You'll find all that information. I've got a really good link I'm just going to post up on your screen now. <sighs> That's really about all I've got to say about that. You might find one of these discs if you're lucky enough to find on one old machine sitting in the scrapyard. This has got all the angles perfectly aligned. That's how I managed to get my alignment so perfect. You could do it with a ruler and a little bit of mathematics. Okay, that's how I've managed to wind my rock solid, and I mean rock solid, coils. That's the end of that. I'm going to go now, so have fun making a wind turbine. Goodbye.